Welcome to Straight to the Point. What is a SIPOC? We're going to be looking at the SIPOC tool today. This is going to be a very helpful tool for again, those Lean Six Sigma professionals out there or process designers, those process mappers. This tool is made to help us understand the inputs and the outputs for a given process. It's going to be starting off with our suppliers and then ultimately leading to our customers. SIPOC itself stands for Suppliers, Inputs, Processes, Output, and Customers. It's also sometimes referred to as COPUS. In this instance, what you would be doing is starting off with your customers first and then ending off with your suppliers. All in all, the reason why this is particularly helpful for us before we start mapping out a process is because it's really going to outline a lot of those key activities that we want to look at. It'll actually just make your process mapping activity easier. The way we're going to be approaching a SIPOC typically is getting a working group of stakeholders together. So we're going to want those who are closest to the process to help us put this together. Of course, you can always take a stab at it yourself as to what you think it is and then bring it back to your group for review and sign off. Of course, before you get started, just as a reminder, you always want to be careful to ensure that you understand what your stream bounds are. So your stream is going to be referring to your start and finish point. Again, very critical, very vital for us to ensure that we know where we're starting and where we're ending in our process. Well, enough of the definition. How about we take a look at a quick example? Today we're going to be looking at a restaurant and we're going to be looking at two steps in particular. One is going to be ordering additional food supplies. So this is going to be where a restaurant is reaching out to their supplier. Perhaps they need some additional fruits or vegetables or other type of food in the restaurant. The second one is going to be a customer that is ordering food. Today we're just going to be looking at these two little pieces of the stream. Let's take a look at our example. Typically you want to build your SIPOC or your COPUS depending on the approach you're using where you actually have it broken out into a similar matrix such as this. You can see in the far left we start off with supplier followed by input, process, output and then customer on the far right of our matrix. We also labeled the swim lanes here for training purposes. You wouldn't regularly label the swim lanes, although if you wanted to, you could. It's not typically part of the template. As mentioned in the previous slide, we're first going to be taking a look at the restaurant ordering food supplies. What we can see is following the supplier column, we have fresh food supplier. So this is referring to the actual company or potentially farmer that is going to be delivering the food supplies to the restaurant. Our input is going to be the restaurant ordering, so this is going to be based on either their inventory, they could take a quick look to see what they have in stock in terms of food, or perhaps they have a digital inventory system. So they're going to be now placing an order, so their inputs are going to be the order. Afterwards, their process is going to be to email that order, followed by the output of the order details. For example now, we're referring to where the restaurant has placed their order, it's been sent to that fresh food supplier, which is the input to the supplier. The process the restaurant followed was emailing the order, and then the output is going to be the expected delivery of food, so what the contents of their order was. And finally, the customer, so the person that is going to be receiving the actual order, so what is being supplied, is going to be the restaurant. In our second example, we're looking at a customer that enters into the restaurant and is going to be ordering some food off the menu. Our supplier is going to be the kitchen staff, so the kitchen staff are going to be the team that prepare the food for the customer. We can see that the input is going to be the customer ordering food. We could see the process that they had to use to decide what food to order would be potentially reviewing the menu, verifying if there's any allergies. They may ask the host for an opinion and they may select something to order finally. When they place their order with the host, after they do place an order, that'll then reach our kitchen staff and the output is going to be yummy food. So our kitchen staff have now produced that yummy food, whatever their order is, and then the customer is going to be the actual customer who placed that order. As you can see, a SIPOC really is helpful for us from a process mapping perspective because if we were starting to look at a process map, if we're looking at a level one or a level two process map, all these elements could be considered while we're building it. In a nutshell, that's a SIPOC. One thing in particular to note is that you're not limited to actually only have one item per line. We could have had multiple suppliers, we could have had multiple inputs, again, multiple processes as we saw in our second example, similar to outputs. You could again have multiple customers too. In addition to that, a SIPOC, of course, is very helpful for us to produce a process map. It's a great tool to bring your stakeholders together and those that are impacted by a given process. Ensure that they have an understanding of what the start to finish point for a given process are. 
Your SIPOC as well is going to be very helpful in identifying what your stream is, so knowing where your start and your finish point are. And we're done. That concludes this session. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave that in the comments. If you like what you saw, please click like. If you dislike what you saw, you can also click that too. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much.